Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video as we take the Blue Jay Ready to Fly model from Fair RC. We'll do an unboxing, we'll put it together, then we'll take it for a test flight. Let's get to it. This is the 2200 millimeter, that's the wingspan Blue Jay RC model, sent to me by the folks at Fair RC. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to show you the box, very nice presentation. Then we're going to do an unboxing, put the model together and take it for a test flight. So again, a very nice presentation. It's a big box, not that it's a especially large airplane, but it includes things like a transmitter, batteries, even a battery and charger. Some of the wingspan, uh, some of the information right here, wingspan of 48 inches, you can see the weight, the battery size, servo, I like that they talk about the center of gravity on here, that is so important for any model to include ready to fly, and then just stuff a 3S battery. So that's what the plane looks like. Let's go ahead and open this box to see what's inside. This is the Blue Jay box, I'm looking at it for the first time with you, so let's just take a journey through this very complete model. Over here you can see that they have included a uh, three cell LiPo battery. That's pretty unusual. So there it is with the XT60 connector and the balancing plug. So that is good. We'll take off this section here. This is the wing foam construction. In the servo installed, it's a four channel model. So this is the ailerons, there's no flaps. You do not need a flap. Notice this will be the um, strut for the wing. It's already installed. And then the connectors for the, for the ailerons once we plug in the wings. The other wing, just as before, again, nice little decals here. The screws, to, I guess, to install it. Plenty of aileron space. I think that's just fine. And here the uh, strut is shown here. Note also, it comes with a FlySky transmitter. It's a four channel transmitter with the controls as such. And so we'll have to figure out how to get that all set up. <clears throat> but it looks like some switches down here, the on off. So that'll be part of my exploration. This is just some bags with goodies, plugs, chargers, covers, bits and bobs, screws. This is the landing gear. I always, always, always like to see metal landing gear. That is just a nice, strong landing gear. Good, firm wheels. That's a very good sign. It's, it's a problem with some of these models, kind of spindly landing gear. This is what you need with three screws to attach it. I like that a lot. You see very nice packing. Now we will take out the Fuselage. Here is the fuselage, elevator servo, the rudder servos inside here, uh, the receiver with the antennas, more servos for steerable nose gear, access hatch for the nose, the prop is already installed, <coughs> and a little spring for the uh, nose gear, kind of like that. And this is where landing gear will go. Just everything looks to be in good shape and really quite complete for the Blue Jay. More details as we spend some time studying it. These are the directions. This is what you don't see too often. This is actually a balanced charger for the battery that goes, the three cell that goes inside the airplane. Just a charger comes with it. Some more, this is a bind plug, I'm pretty sure. We'll read the directions on that. This is the tail surfaces, all hinged and ready to go. Just screw in place, I would assume. And that looks, oh, wait a minute, there's one more thing. Oh, these are the um, 
little ends of the treads where there's a screw on here. So that's fine. And then finally, the all important directions. So it looks like a pretty complete set of directions with the user manual for the transmitter. So next step is to study the directions, see where everything goes together, and then we'll assemble the model step by step and take it for a test flight. These are pretty much the complete set of screws and cover plates and control rods that go into completing the Blue Jay. And here we take a look at the transmitter again. We'll talk more about this. There's no touch screen, just switches and the metal landing gear, which I always like a lot for strength. This is a fuselage. Everything is in place. You can see the receiver is there kind of loose. We'll talk later about um, taping that down and adjusting the transmitter. Plenty of space in the nose for the battery. You want the battery as far forward as you can for center of gravity. This is the uh, attachment point for the landing gear. You can see the key arrangement, the little round section of the metal gear that goes forward into a little um, recess there. Two screws hold that in, recess screws, plenty of strength to hold in the landing gear with the plastic cover plate to make everything look, everything look nice and pretty. The landing gear is in place, very strong, with the two screws to hold in the gear, then two more for the cover plate. The screws use an Allen wrench. I'm assuming this is a standard Allen wrench. This came with the kit, so it's um, optimized for these screws to screw everything in place. Take a look at the wing. The struts are already attached. That's protective yellow tape just for shipping. Uh, the ailerons are in place. They're hinged. The servos are there. No flaps in this four channel model. And here are the extensions for the ailerons. No lights or anything. <laughs> just going to have to connect those ailerons to the uh, Y connector um, in the fuselage. It is absolutely no problem. And here we just uh, trial fit the ailerons. I usually like to power it up to make sure they work okay. Plenty of length on that for the ailerons. You can see where the wing will be attached. And when you attach the ailerons to the Y connector, just make sure black to black, yellow to yellow. Otherwise it will not work. I taped the two antenna wires for the receiver at a 90 degree angle. That's not in the directions, but the usually works better with a 90 degree angle between the two antenna receiver wire, uh, and antenna receiver wires. This is the notched uh, bolt, bolt for the wing hold down. These are the bolts in place. See the arrows, how to twist them. The wing is held on very well, but I had to use a set of pliers to turn these uh, plastic wing bolts. Luckily, everything held together. I'm concerned that if I use it again, it may break it, but good strong to connection. As you can see by the previous videos, there's not much to build this airplane. I'm, I'm not even sure I can use the term build. You literally assemble it. Even with stops to film and check the directions, the whole plane was put together in 45 minutes. Everything went together fine. There were no real issues with it. It balanced out well with a three cell battery. So let's take a little bit of a look at the components. The version I received from Fair RC was the ready to fly. It has the fly uh, sky transmitter. It's a four channel transmitter and the uh, NICAD charger for the included battery. I've never quite seen a charge like this. It's a pretty basic charger, but it'll, it'll do the uh, bill. The way that it works is you plug it into the wall and then you charge the battery, either a two cell or a three cell, by plugging the balancer into the charger. Uh, checking the internet, it'll take a little bit of time to charge the battery, but it will charge the battery. It looks like a fine battery here, three cell. Most people that fly electric models will have their own dedicated electrical charger. But that does come so you have something to charge the battery with uh, here. This is the transmitter that came with it, FlySky. Um, it doesn't have a computer screen, as you can see. This is the on-off switch. This gives indication of pop, um, the electricity. The power, green, high, red is low, yellow in between. And these switches reverse the um, control surfaces. And this is a bind plug to connect the transmitter, bind it to the receiver. Mine came binded already. Uh, that's the way it's supposed to be. But if you have a new receiver or using something different, you'll have to use a bind plug in this button right here. The one thing you will have to add are four AA batteries. The um, plane did not come with a AA battery, so I had to use my own ones for that. And that is the transmitter right there. Everything worked fine. And of course, the normal trim tabs located right there. 
Let's take a look at just kind of a pre-flight of walk around to the airplane. This is the hatch, just a nice little spring-loaded hatch here. There's plenty of room in here for the battery. There's a strap to hold that in there. The battery goes pretty close to the front for the center of gravity, and so th there's no issues with that. It's really a quite big cockpit, and you see this just plugs right in place. The motor is mounted. Uh, the propeller was installed. There's not much holding on the spinner. It, there's no screws or anything. You just click it in place. I think I might put a little bit of clear tape on there just to hold it in place. You don't want to glue it because you have to take it off to put on new props, but that, that is what happened with that. The wing is held on with these two bolts right here. These are kind of unique bolts in that you put them in a key arrangement and you twist them nine degrees to click into place. I had to use pliers to put them in there. It, the wing is absolutely on there, but I'm afraid that if I take the wing on and off, I might shear one of those bolts. So it's on there, but I don't consider this a removable wing. And everything goes okay for the top. Now, looking underneath, the landing gear went on fine with the four screws. No glue is needed to put anything in place. Everything's on here. The nose gear is this kind of unique spring-loaded nose gear that turns. So that's there. Everything's glued into place. This slot up here, I'm sure, is for some sort of strut for a float arrangement. If you want to put floats on this, that's why you have the screws. So you can remove that, put on the floats. The struts click into place on the back. They're fine there. Aileron servos are in place, already connected to the ailerons. Nothing we have to do there, and the wing goes together quite fine. The um, tail goes on with two screws located here. No issue with that. The servo is already uh, had, had to be connected with um, this control rod. The um, club suggested to get zero elevator throw. The rudder was already connected. No issue with that. And the one little trick with these various screws that hold everything in place, they give you a kind of unusual Allen wrench that goes into the bolts to tighten everything up. So I think this is a normal Allen wrench, but this comes with the model for there. So that is essentially it for the walk around. It is a well-built model. There's not too much that's unique about it or surprising. It's fine. The other thing that's super important for all you new pilots out here ready to fly is the center of gravity. It's uh, 55 millimeters, about 2.1 inches back from the leading edge. That is the center of gravity. So give me a second and I will connect the battery to the model and we'll see how the controls work. The battery is in place. I'm not going to bother with the strap. You want the battery as far forward for center of gravity. Let's go ahead and put on the hatch gravity just put our fingers underneath there and the model balances very nicely so that is good now I'll just check the control surfaces realize it's um the prop is operational so up elevator down elevator that is a lot of elevator one of the downsides of these pretty basic radios I can't adjust the control throw that's a lot of elevator right there so we'll just have to be careful rudder is fine there Notice also with the nose gear, again, there's a lot of turning with the nose gear. We'll just have to be careful to try not to over control on takeoff. Ailerons are here, plenty of throw there. And then finally, I'll hold it just to give a touch of the throttle. There'll be absolutely plenty of power and the prop does turn in the right direction. So that is the airplane together went together fine balanced looks like it's all set for flight um, we'll keep an eye on the control surfaces and the next time you'll see me is at the flying field where we have a good flying day we're here at the field very nice day went right down the runway it's hot so we're by ourselves nobody's out here which is fine so we have done a range check the um, range is fine we'll go ahead and reinstall the battery do a control surface check and then take it for a test flight Let's go for a maiden flight. This is the no kidding maiden flight. Nice straight takeoff roll. Plenty of elevator to bring it up. I was concerned there might be too much control throw, but the model flew well with it. It just seemed to handle it fine. 
There was not any trim required. The model flew just like you see it. I slowed it down a little bit to try to uh, get some shots for the video, but just an extremely comfortable flying aircraft, honest, uh, easy to turn, no, no adverse yaw that I could detect. Just a fun flying model, uh, pretty easy to keep in sight. Coming in for the first landing, a little bit of over controlling on my part and when it goes into the grass it flips over so I decided to try one more flight. Just a uh, takeoff, circle to land, again plenty of elevator on the takeoff, very comfortable flying. Came around, tried a little bit more to keep it on the runway this time and you can see it handled well and taxied off back to the pits. We just finished the test flights. I did the first flight where it nosed over. That happens. Just the second one to bring it back on the runway. I couldn't be any happy with this airplane. I was a little bit concerned there was too much of a control throw, but you need that much. It's just the way it's built. It's a very comfortable flight with that amount of control throw. It flies sl uh, slow. It responds quickly to the controls. There was no problem with the takeoff of the nose gear. There's something with that spring that just keeps it going straight down the runway. I didn't put in a click of trim on anything. It just couldn't have flown any better. I'm extremely happy with this airplane. I give it my highest recommendation. Uh, good luck if you want to get one of these Blue Jay trainers. I think it'll make just an excellent trainer.